Hey guys, Anthony here. It's Sunday, May 1st, 2016, and boy, is this year uh, flying by. Um, already May, and uh, down here in South Florida, one month away from our hurricane season, and I am way behind on my preps uh, for hurricane season. As much as I do uh, preach prepping, um, I am still not where I want to be in regards to being ready for a hurricane season. We've had a big reprieve here uh, since, uh, I don't think we've had a major storm since 2005 here in uh, South Florida, in the Fort Lauderdale area anyway. Um, but at any rate, with May starting today, and it's a beautiful day outside, I decided to do a one of my devotionals. One of the many that I have planned in this folder here, these are all ready to go. I just haven't uh, film the studies yet. Um, so there's a lot of devotionals coming for those of you that have been looking for them. I know I've been posting a lot of prepping videos and political commentary and stuff like that. But this channel is also, uh, if you look at the name of the channel, it started because of Bible study and uh, preaching of the word. And so to remain faithful to that, uh, we'll be doing uh, more devotionals in the upcoming weeks and months um, leading out to the new year. Um, today's devotional I wrote in 2013 and is entitled Relationship. So let's get started. Uh, there's some scripture we're going to read and uh, some things I want to talk about in it. And uh, hopefully it's a blessing to you uh, as much as it's been a blessing to me to put these uh, studies together. Um, when preaching the gospel, you'll often hear people say, that you need to enter into relationship with Jesus Christ uh, to be born again. And this is a true biblical statement. It's, it's biblically true. It's in the Bible. You need to be born again. It's scripturally sound. It is only when a person abandons self and asks Christ into their heart and lives that they go from lost to found. Once a person repents of their sin and asks Christ into their hearts, relationship is sealed and it is permanent cannot be broken. Before this point, the person may have had head knowledge about who Jesus was, but they never took that head knowledge and transferred it to a heart knowledge. Uh, many, many people are walking around right this minute um, with a head knowledge about Jesus, and many people are thinking because they know about Jesus that there are and they are in fact uh, have a spot in heaven because they know about him, and that's couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Many of these people believe they're good people, um, but they haven't taken the words of Scripture to heart. And as we'll see in this study, uh, hopefully by the end of the study, they will, if they're watching this video, uh, take the steps necessary to uh, become born again and know for sure that they are sealed in Christ. Back in my college days, 1981 to 85, um, I heard about this girl. This is an example. Maybe it's not a really good example of relationship, but I'm going to try my best. I even was able to see her from time to time around campus, but I, but I did not really know her. It was not until I started dating her and we entered into a relationship that I, that I fully understood just how beautiful a person she was inside and out. Before that point, I only had a superficial knowledge about her. I had head knowledge, but after entering into a relationship, I truly knew what she was about, and I had heart knowledge of her. Um, I really knew who she was, and I wanted the relationship to grow. Now, many years later, I'm still in this growing relationship with her that gets better as time goes on, and that's, I'm speaking about my wife, guys. Uh, we've been together about 35 years, and in one week, uh, actually just over a week, May 9th, we'll be celebrating our 29th wedding anniversary. Uh, I firmly believe that many people today are walking around thinking that because they know about Jesus, they are therefore in a relationship with him. Maybe many reading this devotional or watching the video um, are believing this and thinking this. This could not be further from the truth. The prophet Jeremiah said that the, that the Lord 
would make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This passage of scripture speaks about relationship, not about following laws or statutes. So let's read uh, Jeremiah 31, chapter 31, 30, uh, verse 31 to 37. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I, when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Because they broke my covenant, though I was husband to them, declares the Lord. Verse 33 goes on to say this. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. And pay attention to this. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will Israel ever cease being a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out, will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. Very important scripture in Jeremiah there that we just read. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says this, Come to me, all you who, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. These are the words of Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, verse 30 says. Friends, only Jesus can give us rest. Uh, a pastor recently preached on this passage, and I took some notes, and here is uh, some of the things he said um, regarding this passage. Our culture today is besieged with worry. More and more now, I think, in, in 2016, with the presidential elections coming up and all the uncertainty that's facing us economically and uh, with wars and rumors of wars and terrorism, we're besieged with worry. Forty million Americans suffer from anxiety rooted in worry and many uh, are on prescription medications and that seems to be the answer nowadays uh, for everything but 40 million people suffer from anxiety rooted in worry worry keeps worry keeps growing or is magnified so worry can really lead to a lot of health issues the old english word for worry is to choke or strangle i never knew that Worry breeds unhealthy lifestyle choices. Many times uh, people try to put their worry aside and bury it with drinking and, and drugs or, or um, other um, unhealthy lifestyle choices. 40% of Americans worry about things that will never happen. Now, many of us are worrying about things that will never happen. But Jesus says, come here, take, learn, experience, rest. This is relationship. The right path with the right partner provides peace, and Jesus is the path to that peace. Jesus humbled himself and took the form of a human being. Jesus said he would provide rest for our souls. And friends, that's a blessed quiet. When you have Jesus, even in a world that seems to be going haywire or a world gone mad, we can still have that blessed quiet because we have found rest in Jesus. And his yoke is custom made for your and my situation. Most people today are fooled into thinking they are good enough on their own to gain God's favor. Or maybe they do many good deeds thinking their works are earning them a place in heaven. This, my friends, is one of the greatest lies ever perpetrated by Satan. And it could not be further from the truth. 
I was recently on the phone with someone uh, talking uh, recently, and uh, we were talking uh, back and forth, and um, ministry work had come up, and I was going over some of the ministry I've done over the years, and this person had said, well, I think, uh, you know, I just want to go somewhere and retire and just do good and, and do the right thing, and I think that's, you know, all I can do, and that's the most important thing. Is just being a good person and they went on and on talking about that just being a good person was the most important thing and it, on the surface it's it sounds good but God's plan is for not us to do it on our own but to do it through him and therefore that is why he sent Jesus to save us our sinfulness is deep-rooted it is rooted in not only things that we do that are wrong but a sin nature that is in us from the beginning, from Adam and Eve, when they fell. God's word says in Romans 3, um, verses 23 and 24, it says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Many of us have heard this, and um, that is a very key statement in Scripture. All of us, um, Aunt Bessie, Grandma, Grandpa, you, me, Cousin Nick, um, Aunt Josephine, we've all sinned. The Bible says all have sinned, not some have sinned, all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. So everyone falls short, therefore everyone is in need of a Savior. No matter how good you think they are, no matter how many good deeds they did, no matter how pleasant they were during their lives, or all, all the, you know, the good works that they've done, all the philanthropy and helping of the poor and just caring for the sick, we are still all fall short of the glory of God. But verse 24 very often is not quoted, and it says this, And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus paid the price, bought us back from slavery, and made it so that we can enjoy an everlasting life in heaven. And we're all justified, just as if we have never sinned. So when you read verse 23 of Romans chapter 3, you always read verse 24 as well, because that is the good news. My friends, a transaction must take place between you and God. If that transaction has not taken place today, you are not saved. You are in a very bad place right now. You may think you're in a good place because of the things you have done, or you're standing on your own goodness and your own um, grace. But remember, a transaction must take place for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is what Jesus was talking about when he spoke to Nicodemus. In John 3, 3 says this, Jesus replied very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. No one, no one, no matter how good you think you are, can see the kingdom of God unless he or she is born again. I believe one of the most important passages of Scripture relating to the way people view themselves versus how God views them is found in the book of Ephesians, and that's in chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, and I'll read it. Because many people uh, today are walking around with this verse backwards, and many people are, in fact, um, dying or going to die or have died, with this backwards and that is not a good thing my friends there are a lot of very good people in hell right now a lot of very good people in hell right now Ephesians 2 8 through 10 says this for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is from God verse 9 not by works not by works, it says, so that no one can boast. If it were by works, people could boast and say, I did more than you or I did more than her. It is not by works and no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you see, most people have it backwards. They think their works gives them a key to heaven where it's the good works that are prepared for you because you are God's child and accepted him 
accepted what Christ did for you on the cross, now you are prepared for good works. And the good works that you do are from an outflowing of love of what God did for you, saving you. And he has prepared those in advance for us to do. So good works are not what gets you to heaven, my friends. Faith and trust in Christ Jesus is what gets you to heaven. Most people in the world today have this backwards, as I stated earlier. They think that their good works and deeds can earn God's favor. When asked about this, many will attempt to justify their statements by saying things like this. Oh, I never stole anything. I never murdered anyone. I was never in jail. I go to church. Many good people go to church, but they're still not saved. Many people right now, it's a Sunday, many people right now are sitting in pews that are not saved, that think they are, because they, they're trusting in themselves and not in Christ. I gave to charity or I do volunteer work, they'll say. I'm better than Tom or Sally. Look at Tom. He's a drunkard. And Sally, look what she does. You're comparing yourself and, and uh, measuring yourself against man, not against God. God's standard is perfection. All they are doing is measuring themselves, as I just said, against man and leaving God out of the equation. The good works God has prepared for us come after one enters into a relationship. We do these works out of love for God because of what he did for us. He granted us grace and mercy and faith to believe. Your faith, your, the grace of God and the mercy of God is granted, it's given to you. You don't just dream up faith. Faith is given to you by God. After going through this devotional, do you know, do you now understand about relationship with Jesus? It's one of my questions. Go back and look at the scriptures that we went over. Read them again. Study them. Meditate on them. Pray about them. Stop worrying and trying to earn God's favor, as most people are trying to do. Most other religions, think about it, love. Look at almost any other religion in the world other than Christianity. It's people trying to do better and then hoping that God will somehow reward them. There's no assurance. There's no assurance. Only Christianity gives assurance. Some people will say, well, that's, that's narrow-minded. No, it's not. It's a miracle that there is a way. But it has to be God's way. Remember, who you are or what you do does not get you into heaven. Who you are or what you do does not get you into heaven. It is who you become that gets you into heaven. Do you know for sure that if you died today, you would be certain to go to heaven? Ask yourself that question. Do you know for sure that if you died today, you would for certain be going to heaven? I think back a, a few months ago when I was able to help save a man's life in my office at work. And I did a video on this. It's on my channel. Um, he was just going about his business. He came to work that day. Here's a man in his early 40s. Came to work that day. He was making copies, going through his daily routine like all of us do. He got up, had his coffee, drove to work. Didn't think about dying for sure. I'm sure that wasn't on his mind. While making copies, he collapses onto the floor like that, instantly, unconscious. I sometimes I think to myself, and I don't know his spiritual, um, his spiritual status, but let's say that he was one of those people that we talk about in this passage today, in this devotional today, that was banking on his own good works to get him to heaven. And he's making copies and he dies like that. What a shame. And for sure, he heard the gospel. Living in America, watching all the TV, there's almost every channel has preaching of the gospel on it in America. How many times did he avoid listening or taking the steps to accepting Jesus Christ as his Savior? How many people are in that same predicament right now? Maybe tomorrow you wake up and you don't see the next day. Have you made the decision to trust Christ as your Savior yet? If not, you can pray something like this. This is something I just wrote. It doesn't have to be these exact words. Um, but it does have to contain. 
your confession of sinfulness, your saying that you can't do it on your own and understanding that only Christ can save you it has to contain that and that you're, you want Christ in your life and you want his forgiveness and you want to spend eternity with him. Maybe it'll go something like this. Dear God, thank you for helping me to understand what it means to enter into a relationship with you. Hear my cries to you today. Forgive me for all my wrong thinking and trying to earn your favor. Forgive me for my many trespasses and sins that only the blood of your son Jesus can cover. I believe, Father, that Jesus died for me, taking my sins upon himself, therefore making it possible for me to have eternal life, or an eternal relationship with you. I ask you this day to come into my heart and life. May your Holy Spirit live in me and guide me all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy, and your peace. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Friends, if you prayed something like that and you meant it in your heart, you, my friends, are in a relationship with Jesus Christ that could never be taken away from you. All the devils lined up right now. If Satan lined up all his legions of devils right now and came at you at once, they could not take that relationship that you have with Jesus Christ away from you. All the spirits in hell could not do it all at once, attacking you. That is how secure you are in Christ. I pray that this devotional was a blessing to you. Uh, look forward to more devotionals coming down. Uh, please let us know how we can pray for you. And again, if you need a Bible, let me know. Um, as I will, I do have access to Bibles, and if I don't have access to them, I'll go out and buy them. And I will send you a Bible. And let us know if you received Christ today in your heart and life. Thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for supporting the ministry here and watching all the types of videos that I post. Uh, but these are truly the most important uh, to me. Um, and I think that they're the most uh, fulfilling that I do on my channel. Thanks, everyone. God bless. Make it a great day. Anthony, signing off.